In this example, we're being asked to solve the quadratic equation x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 9 and to solve it by factoring. Now one of the most important things I see right off the bat is the fact that this guy is not set equal to 0. And the reason that's important is the whole groundwork be behind solving equations by factoring is something called the zero property. This is what everything hinges on. We can't emphasize this enough. Uh, it hinges on the fact that if a product equals zero, then guaranteed either the first factor or the second factor, one of them has to be zero. That's what everything hinges on. If I asked you to create a product that gave us zero, one of the numbers, either this one or this one, would have to be zero. And so it's absolutely imperative if we want to solve a quadratic by factoring, then this absolutely has to be equal to zero on the right side. So, um, so let's, let's proceed that way. Um, so even though this left-hand side would actually factor if you tried it, uh, it would do me absolutely no good until this right-hand side is set equal to zero before we try to factor. So let's do that. So to do that, we'll subtract nine from the right-hand side, and we'll also subtract nine from the left-hand side to keep everything equal, because I, I want these staying equal. And we'd have x squared plus two x uh, minus 15 minus nine would make minus 24 equal to zero now, great. Now that that's equal to zero, I can now use this super important property called the zero property that says if my product, if I can factor this polynomial, uh, if I have that equal to zero, then either the first factor or the second factor have to be zero. And that'll give me my two solutions. So let's try to factor this guy to get our product. Okay, if I wanna factor this, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do uh, factor by grouping or my preference for quadratics with a, a coefficient of one is just trial and error. What you want are two binomials that would FOIL to give you this as an answer. And so you can basically just kind of use your common sense here. Uh, to get x squared, this would have to be x times x. x times x is the only way to get x squared with a variable in the first term and a variable in the second term. And then for the last two places, you need something that will multiply to negative 24 and add to positive 2. So let's look at the factors of 24. And if you've watched my previous videos on factoring, you'll know that I don't like to really deal with the signs until closer towards the end of the problem. It's, they're very, very important, and I'm not neglecting them or, or saying they're not important to look at, but it's easier to look at just the factors of just 24, and then we'll deal with the positives and negatives in, in just a minute. So factors of 24, you could have two times 12, if you could make the signs plus or minus be anything you wanted them to be, there's no way to combine those to get a two. So I'm gonna keep looking. Three times eight is also 24, but with positives and negatives within any combination I wanted, they can't give you, that can't give you two either. Uh, four times six, that multiplies to 24, and if the signs were just right, it could give me a two. You can combine four and six to give you a two if the signs were right. So let's go that route. We have a four and a six, and to get a plus two, the six would have to be positive to get six x, and then the four would have to be negative to give me minus four x. Six x minus four x would give me two x. And as an added bonus, the L, F-O-I-L, and FOIL, negative 4 times 6 would give us negative 24 uh, as it should. So great, I factored the left-hand side, and so here comes the zero property. If a product equals zero, then either this guy equals zero or this guy equals zero. So we'll take x minus 4 and set him equal to zero, which will give us a solution of x being 4 and we'll take x plus six equal to zero, that factor equal to zero, and solve for x, and x would be negative six. Okay, so there are my two solutions. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'd encourage you to take these two numbers and stick them back in the original equation, plug them in for x, 
and see if the left side winds up equaling 9. And if these two numbers, when you plug, plug them in for x, if they give you 9, then they must have been solutions to the quadratic equation. So anyways, we're done. Uh, and just in closing, the thing I want to emphasize one more time is whenever you want to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, it has to be set equal to zero first.